Hello, I have a very exciting coding challenge for you today. I'm going to attempt to make some 3D knots. Now these are 3D knots made in processing by Ruby. Ruby who submitted issue number 70 to the Rainbow Topics Repository. Uh, this is related to Super Shapes, or maybe not related, but the idea came from after Super Shapes, knots would be a great follow-up. So there's this Wikipedia link, and as I often do, there is the Paul Bork website, which has tons of mathematical formulas for geometry. And uh, I guess I thought back in 2016, I might like to tackle it. And I took so long that Ruby, in fact, tackled it uh, herself. And you can see these wonderful, um, uh, you, can, you can take a look at this GitHub repo. Now, I haven't actually looked at the code here, whatever, I affirm that I have not looked at the code here. Um, and, but I'm going to certainly look at the Paul Bork website, and I'm pretty sure that this is going to end up being very similar to another coding challenge where I did the Lorenz attractor. So um, let's take a look. So let's see if we can find uh, the simplest way to do this. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but yes, five. No, <laughs> where's my laugh track? Okay, uh, why not do the knots? Oh, this is, just, this is just getting better with every minute. Um, all right, so let's look at what, um, let's, I wanna find the first instance of a formula. Okay, here we go. There are a whole family of curves, including knots. I don't know how well you can read this. Let's make this a little bigger. There are a whole family of curves, including knots, which are formed by the equations x equals r times cosine of phi, times cosine of theta. Y equals R times cosine of phi times sine of theta. Z equals R times sine of phi. Now, I've, I've done this before, right? Didn't I have a video about spherical geometry where this was really, 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 really similar? Hmm. So, the, this is, you, I, I, would, I would just go back and review that, right? We can find the points along a 3D sphere by having two different angles and this idea of spherical coordinates and uh, using spherical coordinates. So what this is, is probably weaving a path around that sphere is gonna end up with some interesting knot patterns. So for example, we could do it this way, whoa. So which are the equations, right, for converting from polar to Cartesian coordinates that we make them r theta phi a function of the parameter beta, which ranges from zero to pi. Ah, ah, look at this. Oh, I love this. Okay, okay, so, so first we just, let's get these formulas. Let's grab this formula and let's put this in our code. So I have a blank sketch here. I'm doing this in processing, <laughs> which has a robust 3D rendering environment, P3D. I've been doing recently a lot of video tutorials about WebGL in P5.js, so maybe I'll try to redo this one. Um, so let's put these formulas in here. I'm gonna put them up here, in just in the comments. Now let's get uh, these formulas uh, and put them here as well. So this is really, I believe, all that I need. So first, I'm gonna have a variable. Let's just do the whole thing all at once. So we can animate it, have it grow, we'll figure out that stuff as we go. But first, let me just try to draw the entire knot. So I need to have a variable, I'm gonna call it beta, which equals zero. And I'm gonna say while beta is less than pi, right, isn't that what it said? Zero to pi, that's the range. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is these. So I'm going to say, convert these now. I'm going to say float r equals this formula. Float theta equals, can someone in the chat confirm that I'm pronouncing the Greek letter phi correctly? I know some people say phi, but I think it's actually phi. So um, Great, I'm gonna add my semicolons. So now I have calculated an r, a theta, and a phi. So once, and this should say uh, cap pi, it has to be all capital letters for the constant. Now, what I'm gonna do now is take these. Now, I'm actually in some ways done. I have the polar, the spherical coordinates for this knot pattern, but what I need to do is, processing only knows about Cartesian coordinates, x, y, z. So that's what this next step is, whoops. So I need to get these formulas, and I can say float x, float y, and float z, and just make sure I put in my semicolons. And then, 
Let's just, um, I was gonna, let's just, well, let's, let's just go for broke here. I want to, well, one thing is I need beta to increase. So I'm gonna say beta plus equals 0 0.1. And I'm just gonna say begin shape, end shape. Is this gonna work? I'm gonna say uh, no fill, stroke 255, and I'm just gonna set a vertex. Vertex at x, y, z. Oops, let's run this. What did I get? Is there anything there? Oh, so first of all, I forget. The origin point is the top left corner in processing. So let's translate to the middle. And let's run this again. I'm hoping to see just, ah, look, there's something. There's my knot pattern. Look, oh, it's beautiful. Look at the knot pattern. So what happened? I'm getting values, and it's making some pattern, but those values are probably really, really tiny. So what I need to do is really expand it out. I could use scale or something, but let's actually just try. I have a feeling that if I just take R and kind of multiply that whole R, R being that radius by like something like 100, I'm going to see something more looking like the knot. There we go. Look at that. That kind of looks like it. Hmm. Now, it's very jagged. So I probably need finer detail. So let's increase beta by less. Let's just try like 0.01. So now I actually have like 100 points for every, I don't know, 10 points for every one point I had before. There we go. Now we're definitely starting. Now, is this really 3D? I believe it is, but let's confirm that by, uh, let's have an angle. And let's just do a little bit of rotation, like rotate Y by that angle and increase the angle by some small amount. There we go. Whoa, so you can see, and that's going really fast, so let's slow that down. I could map it to the mouse or something. So you can see, there is the knot. So first of all, boom, done. We now have this knot. And now there's just so much that we could do. Ooh, let's try uh, adjusting the formulas a little bit. So let's try top, side, front. Yes, not five. So these are some, um, oh look, there's even some source code here <laughs> that I could have copied. So I'm, uh, eight knot, whoa. Oh, look at this, there's all these different possibilities. So actually, so what I'm gonna do as an exercise, I'm gonna let people explore, oh, I really would like to do this one. Uh, I'm gonna let people explore and try to make other versions of these knots. Um, and let's just try, what I wanna do is show you a little bit more about different ways you could render the knot. So one thing that I think is worth looking at is how could I have that knot animate its path? Well, first of all, how could I make it, can I say stroke weight in 3D? Will that make the, because a stroke in 3D is really like a tube. Let's see, um, let's see how that looks. Yeah, so that made it a little thicker, I think, if I say eight. All right, so this is worth doing. I could also probably uh, mess around with the color. So I could say like stroke X, Y, Z or something, and it's gonna give me like, an RGB value according to its XYZ value. This is just like normal material in P5. So you can see you can start to play with the colors of the pattern. But what I really want to do, and let me, uh, I sort of feel like doing this actually. So the R could be the G. So let's just do this. Where the, so we see that similarly. What I really want to do now is I want to show you how to animate this pattern. How do we do that? So the way that we do that is instead of drawing all of the vertices all at once, what if I store them all into an array and then, um, and then create the shape one at a time? So there's, there's a variety of ways I could do this. Um, what I'm actually going to do is I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an array list and call, uh, with p, a p-vector. A p-vector is a kind of object that stores an x, y, z. And I'm going to say uh, vectors equals a new array list, p vector. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now make beta a global variable. And instead of while beta is less than pi, I'm just going to every, um, let me take all this out. 
I mean, I'm going to need this stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to move, actually, what would make more sense is I want to, uh, what I want to do, ah, let me take out the while. I want to put all the drawing stuff separate. So the drawing stuff is going to happen down here, and it's still going to involve a loop. So I want to say every vector inside of vectors set a vertex at v dot x, v dot y, v dot z. So this is now just, this is now just saying, hey, draw all the vectors as a shape. So now what my job becomes is adding these points one at a time. So every time through draw, beta goes up by a little bit. And what I do is I say vectors, and I think it's add in Java and ArrayList, add new p vector at that x, y, z. So I got rid of my loop, and I'm just calculating one x, y, z every frame and adding it. And what this should do is if I run this, I should see it drawing that path. Whoa! This is pretty cool. Now, ah, so I forgot um, one thing is I lost the color. So I could do something where I, you know, calculate, make an object for a vertex that has the color and the x, y, z. So I could, there's probably a lot of ways I could think about organizing this. Right now, I think what I might just do is uh, set the stroke here. And one thing I could do is, I mean, this is redundant. But, uh, so this is very inefficient. But I can ask for the, um, oh, I could just say, um, I could ask for uh, the magnitude, for example, of the vector. That's its length. And I could say something like, two, uh, whoops, I could say stroke uh, 255, magnitude 255. So the length of the vector, right, how far it is from the center, has something to do with its color. So you can see now, again, again, I've kind of got that coloring back in. Oh, this is so lovely. Well, this actually worked out quite well. So I think I'm going to stop here and quit while I'm ahead, so to speak. There's probably a lot of things you could think about doing. Um, you could look at Ruby's code, which I think uh, will have more examples. Can you create any of these other patterns? Can you think of other ways of uh, rendering them? Could you make some nice GIF animations? So if you make something, uh, share it. There's three ways you can share. Well, I'll put, there's a link to the source code for this challenge in the description. There's a readme there, so you can add a link to that readme. You can tweet me at Schiffman or just use hashtag the, why not, why K-N-O-T. <laughs> uh, hashtag why not, uh, and I, uh, on Twitter, uh, I'm at Schiffman, and uh, I'd love to see all the different beautiful knots you make. And at some point, I will look into remaking this in P5.js. Okay, thanks for watching this coding challenge. <laughs> Have a good day.